At Clarity Corner with Christiana, we peel back the layers that are clouding your ability to see and show you ways you can reclaim your life and your communication. It's not what you know, it's what you implement that makes all the difference. Welcome to Clarity Corner with Christiana. So great to have you here, and it's so great to be back in the studio. I tell you, Bobby, I'm so happy to be with you today. Good to see you behind the glass. <laughs> I know. I'm in the fishbowl. So have you ever made plans only to have your plans fall apart, or have you set goals, but somehow, like during the month, you get off track and you wonder, where the heck am I? More times than not, I might have to say. <laughs> Exactly. Well, today, what I like to do is start off the month every time looking at building momentum with planning because, you know, it's easy to like make a plan, but then life happens. And I will tell you, right, we, I have a lot going on in my world. And I feel like I feel like it's like sex in the city with like my life is on the radio now. It's so weird. But my mother-in-law has stage four cancer. So we've been dealing with that this month, getting into assisted living and really getting her to a place where she has all the support, which has been a lot of decisions, a lot of micromanaging. And uh, really, you know, we have the family here. So today is her birthday. So big happy birthday to Ruby. I love you. And I just really want to send a big shout out to you that we love you so much. And then uh, also... COVID swept through our household. So we had my mother staying with us and then it was Freddie and I. And so, you know, just when you think you have all these amazing plans set up, your life gets put on hold. And, but here's the thing, this is nothing new. It's not special. It's life. If it's not this, it's something else. So what I want to be able to do is to empower you with the tools to be able to say, okay, all right, let me make an adjustment. Let me figure out what I'm going to do, like consolidate, shift my goals downsize so I know exactly what I'm focused on, then we can make a plan and come back. So at the end of every month, the first thing we like to do is review the previous month. And then we like to really say, okay, what are we going to do moving forward? And then we're going to have a look at what open cycles do we have remaining? And then how can we create necessity in order to get that done? And I want to share with you that I have my special guest and my podcast co-host here with me today. So please give a huge welcome to Anita Berger. Hey, Christiana. <laughs> Yay. It's, I'm, I'm so glad that we're here today and you're back in the studio. This is, you know, one of my favorite topics. So thank you so much for having me today. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you so much for showing up on, on like last minute notice. You're amazing. And I'm so grateful to have you in my corner. So we're talking about, let's review the previous month. So I, what I like to do is it's not just a one approach fits all. You have your approach. I have my approach. And so I want to be able to give people the viewpoint of what makes sense for you. So here's two different ways of looking at it. And then again, it really comes down to each person's different. Each personality is different. So we have to adjust it based on your style, but let's find something that works for you. So Anita, when you're looking at reviewing the previous month, what is your process for doing that? That is such a wonderful question. And I'm grateful that you pointed out that everybody's process is different. Mm -hmm. The first thing I do is I look at it realistically. Um, when I when I grab my goals, which uh, I just grabbed the other day on the 31st, which was Monday, um, I look at what I set out to do in the month. And mm -hmm. then I also look at, okay, what unexpected things happened that may have shifted what I have on that sheet of paper, even before I look at it because we've had lots of things. You had lots of things happen this mm -hmm. last month. I did as well. Uh, that took me off track. So I just am gentle with myself. And then I go through everything and I look at what I, I accomplished. And, and I just focus on that and I celebrate that I joyously look at it and like, wow, if I didn't have this on my list, I probably wouldn't have done it. Mm -hmm. Right. So it, I just, I just look at, and I focus on the things that I achieved. I don't even at this point, look at what was on the list that didn't get crossed off because that's, that's going to bring me down. Yes. And I just want to yes. lift, lift myself up at that point. Well, and you make a good point, Anita, really looking at, first of all, what did you get done? Cause I know for me, like I had all these great big plans, but then family, family in our family, it's family first, right? So if, everything's going crazy. I have to like buckle down, take care of family. And I did so much. 
And at the same point, I still had an incredibly wonderful business month, but I had to scale it back a lot more than I was going to. But again, I love the fact that we're focusing on celebrating all the wins, celebrating all the successes, because like you said, it's very easy to beat yourself up. And the first thing we want to do is focus on all the things that are going well. So beautiful with that. Yes, I really think it's important really to take the time to celebrate the things that have happened that that you kind of overlook because you can absolutely beat yourself up. You and I both know we could beat ourselves up for the what I didn't do list. <laughs> yes. But, but taking a few moments, understanding, like I had so many things take me off track this past month mm -hmm. and I still have my paperwork up to date. I still made progress in some other areas of my business. Things still happened. And if I just looked at what I didn't, I would feel so bad, mm -hmm. so miserable. I'd probably go, you know, go down to the local liquor store and, and buy a couple <laughs> bottles of wine to like drown my sorrows. <laughs> you crack me up. Absolutely. And then the other thing that I love too, that you say, and, and we both work on this is that your goals are a living document. It's not something in stone that if something comes in and they need to be changed, if you need to make an adjustment, it doesn't mean you're good or bad or right or wrong. It just means that, okay, wait a second, something is, has now taken top billing and I need to make adjustments on the back end. Right. And I think that's such an important point because like you didn't know that um, you guys were going to get, you know, a little ill and you didn't know that things would happen with your mom and with uh, your mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. like that is top billing. And to negate the incredible amount of time and effort that you put into your family mm -hmm. would be unfair to everybody, including them. So just understanding that you can adjust what you've decided for the month at any point in the month. You can decide on the first that you want to do, you know, 10 different things. Mm -hmm. And on the second, let's say you come down with, you know, a case of, I just want to go on vacation. You can change your, <laughs> you can change your list. It's okay. Yes, absolutely. Hey, and in spite of all of that, I booked a spot on a TV show on Thursday to really go and share about personalities. So I'm really excited about that. And I have another event on Tuesday. No, sorry, Monday at like 2 a.m. because I'm doing something internationally and I'm getting interviewed there. So I have like all these other things happening, but it's like, you know, on the list of my fantasy land of everything I'm going to get done versus what I get done there was a discrepancy. But again, what I love, oh, hey, thank you guys for watching online. Um, hey, let me just give you a quick shout out on how you can reach us. If you're in the local area, it's Tantalk 106.1 FM or 1340 AM or WDCF, Dade City, Florida, 102.3 FM and 1350 AM or VZHR, Zephyr Hills, 104.3 FM, 1400 AM. I'm so proud of myself that I actually got that correct. Thank you, Bobby, for the coaching. <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt, get a coach. And then um, if you aren't in the local Tampa Bay area or in any of those areas, you can stream on facebook.com forward slash the clarity strategist, the clarity strategist. So um, those are the way you can do there. If you have questions, uh, feel free to call in today at 727-441-3000. And Anita and I will be taking questions as well. So yes. now that we got all that out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So first step is always look at the previous month, celebrate your successes so you can acknowledge and build yourself up for what you did accomplish. And oftentimes it may be a lot more than you think. And when you really look at it, that's where you get to build a beautiful list. And then what came up, what got in the way and what adjustments did you have to make? That's also really uh, super important. And then going forward, then how do you, how, what's your approach, Anita, for preparing for the month? How are you setting your goals for the month? Oh, this is so pivotal for me. Uh, of course, we all have our massive list of things we want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And there's things that are carried over from the previous month. So what I do is I, I get my list of carryovers, things I want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And my, and most importantly, my day timer. Now, for me, it's an actual book because I'm I'm pretty old school. I want a, a paper uh, day timer. And then I look at what I already have committed. If I am attempting 
to get three solid 40 hour weeks of work done and I've got half of my month booked, I'm setting myself up for failure. Yeah. So I, I look at what I'm already committed to. Then based on that, I, I look realistically at what I can accomplish mm-hmm. and I mark that stuff down and I actually schedule it in so that it's in my day timer. And then I look at the things that kind of will stretch me a little bit. And I, and I put those on my, you know, I pencil those in, I don't write those into my day timer because they can be adjusted. So I, I, the most important thing for me is to look at what I've committed to and look at like, there's deadlines this next month for me and our business that have to get done, schedule that stuff in. And then I look at the things that I can do that would propel my business forward or things that uh, I've added time to, because I still Mm -hmm. do that. Um, And like, so I've kind of got catch up things. So I've got, you know, kind of three categories, like I must get this done things that absolutely there's big penalties. If I don't, Mm -hmm. I've got the the list of things to kind of move me forward and kind of the messes to clean up from, you know, previous transgressions. I love that you said that because I have a a three prong approach that, you know, and I I frame it, I've done this in my organizing business forever, but it's been incredibly helpful in goal setting, which is, and you actually kind of have a similar thing, but it's like past present and future. Because what I find most often is we pause our lives to clean up the past only to have an avalanche of what we've put on hold while we're cleaning up the past. So we never really get out from under that undertow. And then the other part is then what are you working on in the present that has to get handled? Like, what are your must do's? What are the things that have a penalty with them, right? That has to get handled this month. And then what are you building towards in the next 30, 60, 90 days that you can start chipping away at? So you're in momentum. So I, I look at it from those viewpoints. And again, I love what you said too, about really looking at my calendar now, because I have two variables called my mother and my mother-in-law, and I don't know what's going to happen with either of those. I have my plans and then I have what really happens. So I have travel plans where I set up, I'm supposed to be in San Diego for a week. And I've already said, just FYI, at any moment I opt to pull out and not go just so you're aware, you know, family first, but you know, I might have to break plans. So I've already put that into my planning. So that way I don't feel guilty because I had to cancel my plans in January to go. So that to me is really important. So like, like I said, with you too, like I have all my firm things, but then I have what I really want to do. And I'm also creating a backup plan. So if I don't go, what am I focusing on? Mm -hmm. Something that's been really (laughs) helpful to me when I'm doing this process it is focusing on getting the things that absolutely have to be done as soon as possible. So if I have, I know by the end of this month, there's some filing I have to do for our business. I'm not going to wait until the 20th to start it. I've got all the information now. It will be processed as fast as I can mm-hmm. so that I'm not scrambling and, and stressed out and worried, you know, if something does come up, like if we decide uh, to head to the mountains and, you know, enjoy some skiing and, and hiking at mid month, I don't have to worry about, Oh, wait, I have to spend two days in the office to get things prepared. I'm going to get everything done as, as early as I can in my schedule. Absolutely. So we're going to pause right there. We're going to be heading back. Uh, we're going to go to a quick commercial before we come back. So guys feel free to stream and follow on Facebook. Uh, facebook.com forward slash the clarity strategist or tune in on 102.3 FM, 104.3 FM or 106.1 FM. We'll see you in a minute. This is the Tan Talk Radio Network. Are you hoping to grow your business but not sure how? Has your business flattened out? It may be your messaging. This is Maureen Famiana with MEF Media. I've been in the TV broadcasting business for more than 30 years and I enjoy helping businesses and entrepreneurs go to the next level. It's about strategy and branding, finding the right story to tell, and then getting media exposure. I'm here to help you grow your business. Find me on Facebook or my website at MEF Media, and let's launch your next chapter today. Excitement returns to the Sunshine State. It's the most thrilling time of the year, and the Florida State Fair is back with epic rides, immersive live performances, and so much more. You don't want to miss it. The Midway is waiting for you. Find your fun in the sun at the Florida State Fair. Tickets on sale now. Limited time deals online at floridastatefair.com. Florida State Fair, February 10th through the 21st. 
few years ago, my skin was a mess. It was dry, lifeless, and aging fast. My busy travel schedule teaching yoga across the world was really catching up on me. I tried everything I could find, and it just got worse. So I created my own product based on 100% natural ingredients, and what a difference. Now my skin is glowing and radiant, and I look and feel 10 years younger. The serum I use is called F3. It's our best seller, and I've created a whole range of products to suit all skin types. So if you want actual results using 100% natural skin care, visit formulaflawless.com. Don't turn it off now. You need this stuff. Tampa Bay's Tan Talk Radio Network. Welcome back to Clarity Corner with Christiana. I'm here with special guest and my podcast co-host, Anita Berger. So Anita, I love that before break, we were talking about really quickly how we focus on our goals. When we're the first thing that we do before we start any month is we review the previous month. What worked? What successes do we have? Then we look at what are we already committed to? And then do we have enough time realistically to budget in everything that we have on our big mounting list? Yes. I remember when you and I first started working together, we were both a hundred percent guilty of this. We would make this long list of things that we wanted to accomplish. And then we'd go to like make it happen. And we'd realize we had all these other things on the go that didn't make it onto our list. Mm-hmm. The month would end. We'd feel like total losers because we didn't get the 7,000 things done. We only got like, you know, 6,055. Right. right. Like we're beating ourselves up until we learned to be a little more gentle with ourselves. Look at what was going on and look at we could what we could realistically accomplish. OK, you crack me up because that's so true. I would I would take everything that was on my calendar and I'm like, well, it's already on my calendar, so it doesn't count. I have to come up with everything <laughs> else that I have to add to it. And you'd be like, why don't you just do the easy thing? And put what's on your list? I'm like, but it's already on my calendar. <laughs> and you, it took you so long to break me of that habit. And it's embarrassing to say, but I love, but here's the thing. If you can't have a sense of humor about your planning or whatever, and you're going to take it too seriously, you're just going to make yourself miserable on the way to your goals. And, you know, life is in the journey. It's not in the destination. So as, as we create successes or create change or do those things that that's when happiness comes. So the more that we can get out and create and, and have that viewpoint of flexibility, we're going to enjoy our lives so much more versus the living in degrees of failure. Yeah. And when, when I started with, when you and I started talking uh, every week, which has been like getting close to four years now, if I'm not mistaken, I know it's crazy. The biggest thing that I found was to get something on a a list or whatever kind of sheet you want or whatever. So you can create momentum, even if it's, you know, getting up five minutes earlier every day for a week, all of a sudden, Oh, wow. I've got some momentum there. Maybe I'll try like seven minutes. Maybe I'll try like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a huge step. It's just to create some momentum. Absolutely. And one of the things that I want to talk about when it comes to your goals, so you have your list of things that you want to get done, things that are necessities. I look at it from a three-prong approach, past, present, and future. But what I really wanted to talk about is how do you get things done? Have you ever noticed like everything that had to get done this month when, with relationship to my mo- the mothers, my mother-in-law and my mom, I didn't have an option of it not coming together. So it came together, right? I had a very high necessity. There was no way it couldn't work out. So I created a way. So there's this beautiful piece about creating necessity. If you want something and, ah, oh, if I get it, great. Well, there's no necessity there. So for you to push through something that's uncomfortable, it, you know, it just depends on your mood. However, if you can make something a necessity, if you can drive a deadline and create something like that, all of a sudden you're going to get so much more done in a short period of time because you've created a consequence or something like that. How do you frame that in your world, Anita? (laughs) Yeah. As you're talking (laughs) about that, I was just thinking about how I create necessity in my life. Um, (laughs) I have rental properties and, uh, (laughs) I, I'm just thinking about how a few months ago I had a, a vacancy. The place was a mess. I rented it out and had four days to clean up the place, uh, repaint, and my helper got sick. <laughs> oh, I remember that. 
Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's uh, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, but yeah, the, exactly what you said, creating necessity. Um, there is stuff that absolutely has to happen this month um, for us here in Canada. I'm uh, in Western Canada. Our, any employees that we've had, we have to get T4s out by the end of this month or, or I face penalties. Well, that's mm -hmm. a huge thing on my agenda. And the necessity is I don't want to pay any penalties. Uh, but, you know, as soon as there's something that's urgent, uh, I get it done. So I'd like to create a little urgency with myself, uh, meaning like if I know I need to clean my house and I'm kind of slagging, mm -hmm. I invite somebody over because that will create the, you know, idea that, oh dear, my, like, I can't have them see my dirty dishes or the, you know, the bathroom needs to be cleaned, that sort of thing. I, I create a, a situation that makes it urgent for me to get it done. Otherwise I just sit and like, oh, it's okay. I can do it later. Um, but you also know, I'm very disciplined. If I say I'm going to do something, I get it done. Yes. You have that very blueprinty <laughs> personality that loves a system and a plan and a checklist. I, however, am not that person. <laughs> and so I, we had all this family coming in today and most of them are at the house right now. And so, Hey, everyone at home. Uh, but yesterday I was like, okay, I need to call in the troops. So I called in a cleaning crew and I'm like, I just can't get, I can't get a handle on it with everything I've got going on. So they came in and did a huge storm of like cleaning and getting everything ready. Cause I said, you know, her birthday's tomorrow. I know everyone's going to end up at my house. So I better just take, I better like tackle it. Usually knowing someone's coming, I can like whip it into shape or use that as a thing, but I just didn't have any extra energy left. So I just outsourced it. Yeah. And I think that's an important thing to talk about is like delegating or outsourcing things that just aren't important. I've, I have learned that from other people because I'm a do it all myself kind of girl. Yep. Uh, and then I hit a wall and I can't get out of bed for like <laughs> a month and a half because I'm so tired or I've hurt myself. But it's a really good thing to keep going back and thinking about like, do you really have to do it? Mm -hmm. Is there someone that you can get to do the job for you? I've learned through our rentals delegating things like cleaning and painting. Do they do the job I would do? No. But if they do 80% of what I need done the way I want it done, hey, I'm perfectly okay with that because it buys back my time to focus on other things. It's great to have someone come help you clean. I, I've done that, you know, more than once. Mm -hmm. And the free, the freeing thing is that you can like I said, focus on things that are more important, where it's, you know, answering emails, you can do follow-ups with your clients. For me, um, I'm in, I'm studying plant medicine. I can do more studying or I can catch up on my office work. It's okay to have someone else do it for you. That's a huge thing for me. Cause you remember in the beginning, I would never delegate. You would have to get on me so bad. I mean, it's embarrassing. I will say it. I was like a control freak in that way. But now, right now I'm just like, I don't have the time for it. And I have to really look at what's most important, like going to my mom's rehab center, my mom's in rehab. So she, she can't be at home right now. Well, I have to go in there and micromanage because they're going to do things their way. And I need to go check on her. And it's of course not done to the way that I would have it done, but it's better than me having to do 24 seven. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm like, okay, well going in and supporting the staff and helping them, but that takes an hour, two hours a day of going in, popping in. They never know when I'm coming in. So it's, I'm always like, <laughs> I'm always there. So never quite sure when I'm going to be around, but I, I do that on purpose, right? Like, because I want to make sure that everybody is contributing and helping and things are getting done. And I know people are spread thin. And so I'd rather outsource something else. So I have time for that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right? There's prioritizing. Exactly. So again, I want you guys to think, grab a pen and paper and think about what are your top priorities for this month? Are you going to adopt the past, clean up something from the past, handle the present, build towards the future? Are you going to take Anita? Anita, your process is again, the I, must get done. Yes. Yeah, so the things I have to, have to get done, mm -hmm. the things that I want to get done or, or accomplished to propel my business mm -hmm. and then cleaning up messes. 
and then cleaning up messes. So again, you know, it can be, everybody has a different way. Now, Anita is a very structured, very organized mind and she's amazing. She like tracks all of her goals. She keeps all of her numbers. She's, she's brilliant in that way. And again, then there's, there's the other people that take the um approach like, oh, um, well, I could um, do this or I could do this. And they don't really put much time into planning. And so when we're focusing on a past, present, future, it gives you a viewpoint of, okay, what mess have I like let accumulate that I should probably handle? What do I really need to get done this month? And what can I plan going forward? So it gives you a bit of a trajectory, but in a very loose way that you can design to fit your, your personality style. Mm -hmm. I think the idea that not one <laughs> size fits all the trainers we've worked with in the past, and there's been dozens, if not like you know, just tons. Mm -hmm. They all have their different approach. And, and what I've learned is that their approach doesn't have to be my approach. And the people listening can take a piece of like one thing that they like of yours and one thing they like of mine or none of them and create their own systems as long as it works for you and you are creating momentum. That's so perfect. It's so magical. It doesn't have to be ABC. Exactly. You can be like DMQ. I don't really care. <clears throat> yes, absolutely. So I apologize if I sound like I have a frog in my throat. There's some, <laughs> there's some lingering things going on. So, <laughs> you know, I do, I'm usually not this throaty in my, uh, in my <laughs> communication. So I apologize <laughs> if it's, <laughs> it's distracting for me, but um, for those of you that don't know me, <laughs> I'm not normally like this. Okay. So, so what we talked about was being prepared and really, again, having a working living document of what have you handled last month, being gentle, looking at your successes, building forward. So I really want you to understand the process and the thinking and then adapt it to yourself. So Bobby, are you able to follow along and think about how you could tackle your life in that way? I have been doing it, you know, thinking, you know, like you were talking about re recapping the previous month and, mm -hmm. you know, seeing what the actual list of things that got done as opposed to the fantasy list. And then maybe making the fantasy list for the next month a little more realistic. I guess. Ah, exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any questions about what's going on so far or is it pretty clear? No, that's, that's, that's it's all ringing a lot of bells. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. And Anita, uh, Bobby is a fellow blueprint. So there you go. Nice to meet a fellow blueprint. Yes. <laughs> Right. Because it's really important to understand that there are four different primary personality types and each will adopt it differently. So a blueprint is going to want to really have a plan going into the month. So that way they know what they've got, whether they adhere to it or not. Generally, that's what they prefer, but at least it gives them that structure. So they're not just floating around and, and not so sure. Nurturing personality styles tend to be like, oh, well, let me feel into it. Do I feel? It's a very feel-driven or gut intuition-based driven, uh, but it really comes down to relationships and we're the type of personality as a nurturing style that we tend to put other people first before ourselves. So we need a little more support in the planning department. And then the knowledge really just love to get information. So they're usually information junkies. They eat it for for data for breakfast. So really they need to see what the big picture is and then be able to support it with information. And then the action just wants a result. They don't care. They're usually moved so fast. It's like, you know, if they, they do it so quickly that something will stick, right? <laughs> right? That they're just, they really just want that flexibility. And oftentimes they'll think a plan will slow them down. But when they realize if they just have something at least loose and putting them in a direction, I have a client that I'm working with who's an action knowledge. And she says she's exhausted. She gets so much stuff done, right? But she doesn't really get traction. So I've been working with her. And what we did is we, we mapped out, we emptied her brain and mapped out what she wanted to get done. And we realized that, that we were going to meet weekly, but there, we had so much on her list because she's in action that it took two weeks to get it done. So all we did is we just adjusted and said, okay, let's do a check-in, a short check-in midweek or, you know, the following week. And so every two weeks we'll pick another list. And all of a sudden she's like a racehorse. Her business is taking off. She was here visiting um, last week. So again, it's really comes down to finding what makes sense for you. And I really want you to understand and listen to it from, well, what's your viewpoint? Do you need that flexibility? We'll make it looser. So that way you have more flexibility, but at least that way you can track your results. Yeah, tracking your results. That is, that's huge because what will happen for me is I'll go through the day and I'll forget that I did anything. 
Mm -hmm. I'll look around at the other day and like, I didn't do anything. And I take a moment and I look around and I'm like, oh, wait, that pile of receipts has been handled. The emails that I uh, have in my inbox are handled, Mm -hmm. but because I didn't physically write it down and look at it, I think I didn't do anything. I do that all the time. And again, that's why it's really important to track your results. And that's why it's important to have a process or even a loose plan for making sure you stay on track for where you want to be going. So that way you have a trajectory because as, uh, as one of my clients said, we know Christiana, if you have a GPS, it only works if you put in a destination. (laughs) And I thought how appropriate, right? I mean, we all need to know, pardon me, where we're going. And if we don't actually have a clear vision. Let's say maybe I know I'm going to go to New York, but I maybe now I don't know where in New York, but at least if I know I'm going to the state of New York, I can start moving in the right direction. I can figure out the location when I get there or as I get closer, but at least I know I'm moving in the right direction. I'm not heading over to Los Angeles, right? It's a totally different approach. So let's have a look at open cycles, Anita. (laughs) <laughs> Do you want to share with uh, people what an open cycle is? We've talked about this before on the show, and this is something that is an ongoing habit that's going to make your life incredibly easy. Mm-hmm. Open cycles, again, adopt whatever definition you want. Uh, this is mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, mine is, are all those things that you've started, whether it you know, be a project or, uh, you know, a a new program, a study, like you've taken some classes, anything that you've started that isn't finished. And it could be like you said, oh, I'm going to meet someone for coffee in the next month and you don't get it done. That's an open cycle. And what the energy behind it, the idea behind it is that anything that you've committed to do and you haven't done is kind of taking up space in your brain. Think of it as like a tab open on your computer, like, okay, I'm going to do like go for lunch. I'm going to read a book. I'm going to, I don't know, file whatever T4s. Those are all things that, that my energy is going out on kind of not draining me, but kind of pulls my attention away from projects. So they're things that just aren't finished yet. And it's, I have to say, I have open cycles. Everybody does. And if they don't, well, I don't believe them. Uh, <laughs> Well, Anita, what we're going to do, we're going to go to a quick break here, but when we come back, we're going to show you because all those things take up all your mental space. We're going to show you how to create space. So make sure to stay tuned and we'll be Mm -hmm. right back after this commercial. This is the Tan Talk Radio Network. A few years ago, my skin was a mess. It was dry, lifeless, and aging fast. My busy travel schedule teaching yoga across the world was really catching up on me. I tried everything I could find and it just got worse. So I created my own product based on 100% natural ingredients and what a difference. Now my skin is glowing and radiant and I look and feel 10 years younger. The serum I used is called F3. It's our best seller and I've created a whole range of products to suit all skin types. So if you want actual results using 100% natural skincare, visit formulaflawless.com. Excitement returns to the Sunshine State. It's the most thrilling time of the year and the Florida State Fair is back with epic rides, immersive live performances, and so much more. The Midway is waiting for you. Tickets on sale now. Limited time deals online at floridastatefair.com and participating Wawa stores. You don't want to miss it. Florida State Fair, February 10th through the 21st. Are you hoping to grow your business but not sure how? Has your business flattened out? It may be your messaging. This is Maureen Famiana with MEF Media. I've been in the TV broadcasting business for more than 30 years, and I enjoy helping businesses and entrepreneurs go to the next level. It's about strategy and branding, finding the right story to tell, and then getting media exposure. I'm here to help you grow your business. Find me on Facebook or my website at MEF Media, and let's launch your next chapter today. Don't turn it off now. You need this stuff. Tampa Bay's Talk Radio Network. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Clarity Corner with Christiana. I'm here with special guest Anita Berger, and we are talking about open cycles. You know, those things that like tabs that are open on your computer, you're like, oh, my gosh, I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to do this. And I, oh, wait, I forgot I need to do this. And you have you carry all of those in your brain. What happens is if they're all in your brain, it's almost like 
think of it this way. You get a hundred units of attention. And as the hooks get filled up, you can't take in anything more. It's like a thimble, right? Or I'm getting called out on the tabs again, <laughs> it's both my brain and my actual computer. Oh, really? And what happens is slows down. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> a lot. Anita, Quickly. You, should, you should see him laughing over here as we're talking about all these open cycles. Mm. <laughs> but one of the open cycles that I want to talk about too are like unfinished conversations. Like maybe that person you got into a tiff with and you haven't resolved it. That's also an open cycle. So can you just decommit from it or can you like clean that up? But again, we, what we want to do is what do you do with all this stuff? It's distracting you. You're losing your productivity. So how do you handle it? One of the ways that we handle it, and Anita, I'm going to have you go into this a little bit more deeply, is get it out of your head. You got to write them all down. Yes. I, you know me. I love, I love things written down. That's, uh, <laughs> that's my personality type. Um, and I just want to like have a quick little um, uh, shout out like, Hey, if you have like 50 tabs open on your computer, Christiana, close them because it's driving me crazy. (laughs) (laughs) Technically, I only have one tab open because I'm at the studio (laughs) and it's the streaming tab. But yes, at my, I think I only have 10 open right now on my computer. Drives me crazy, but that's okay because it's allowed to drive me crazy. And I, I keep as many tabs closed as possible, but Circling back to the topic, <laughs> the, what I, I take time to do this very regularly. I have a list. Um, I have a list for my husband, by the way, just so, you know, if, if people want to know how to communicate effectively with your spouse on things you want to get done, uh, make a list. And so I make a list of all the things that all these things that I want to get done or I've started. Mm-hmm. And then I, I just start looking at what I can get handled. You know, can I do something? I have a, a storage room in my, my home mm-hmm. and, uh, because it's winter, uh, it's also substitutes as a fridge and it's kind of a disaster and, yep. and I can't go in there and get it done in one shot. I just physically can. I'm dealing with back injury. I'm busy with other stuff. So if I can allocate like, Oh, 10 minutes, uh, maybe do a 10 minute magic mm-hmm. and work at that pretty soon it's going to get handled. So I writing everything down and then just handling the stuff you can as fast as possible. Like some things might be a matter of like, Oh, I have a lunch. I right now have an open cycle with a friend. I was going to have coffee with her yesterday, but we had a crazy, or I guess Monday, we had a crazy windstorm and my driveway was blocked. So I postponed it. I still have to reschedule that. I can take care of that in a matter of like 30 seconds with a text, but it's an open cycle and it's on my list. Actually, the list is more um, post-it notes, which I love. Okay. So you make a good point. So first of all, what you want to do is you want to make a list. Now, if you're a physical person like Anita, she's going to manually write it down. Now, I recommend not doing it on post-it notes just because things can get lost and then your brain's not going to trust the process. But Anita is very organized. So she has that brain, that structure. So she actually can use post-it notes and not get lost in the confusion. A (laughs) nurturing or an action, that would be a bit of a nightmare, right? Because it would just be wherever they are and then post-it notes would take over your whole house. So with, go ahead. Anita? Oh, I I didn't say anything. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought you did. (laughs) Okay, so then, um, so with that, it's really important to have a place that you're writing everything. And if you're a digital person, you want to keep a running document on your computer or your notepad or Microsoft to do or whatever list that you use. So understand that if you're digital, you're going to keep it digital. If you're physical, you're going to keep it physical. And then what I want you to do is focus on what are the must get done, the things that will have a consequence. Those are the things that you're going to do first. And I I liken it this way. You're only ever going to clean your garage when your taxes are due right? Because cleaning the garage is suddenly a lot less painful than doing your taxes, right? It's like, so it's a matter of we avoid what's painful. So that way, if there's a, if there's a consequence, then that has to be the thing that must get done. So that way, because there's usually a lot of things on the list. Also, I like to highlight everything that will take 10 minutes or less. So that way, if I have like a bunch of phone calls that need to be made or small things, then that way I have a very quick cheat sheet 
So when I have a block of time, I can say, oh, wait a second, I could just order this, make that call, schedule this, send that text like you were saying. Mm -hmm. I love that you highlight the things that only take a few minutes because I think it's, it's very um, common for a lot of people to have moments in the day where they're like, oh, what do I want to do now? Mm -hmm. And the idea of like starting a big project, you know, like at five o'clock in the afternoon, I don't want to start a big project in my office because I like to get out of my office by 530. Mm -hmm. I, I the time zone of 530 depends on my momentum, but I, I don't want to start anything big. So then I can consult that list. And if, if things are highlighted, I may be stealing that idea, by the way, oh, uh, <laughs> feel free. I, I can easily just grab that and see what those things are versus like look through the list and see, kind of determine at that point how long things will take. So that's a really great thing to have. Again, I would have a post-it note. I have post-it notes on my desk right now, things that, you know, I have to get done, little open cycles. And I, the reason I use that is because when people are talking to me and I make commitments, I write them down mm -hmm. and then I pop them on a post-it note. But um, I love the idea of writing the list and highlighting. That's beautiful. Yeah. And I'm going to post, I'm going to posit that your post-it notes are like tabs on a computer. Just saying, Anita. <laughs> <laughs> I, I literally have one on my desk and that's from a conversation I had with a, my onsite caretaker uh -huh. and it's, I just have one. I don't have, I don't have hundreds. I have one. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Well, what's great is you're really, one of the things that you're brilliant at is you're brilliant at either committing or decommitting or scheduling it. So if you schedule it, it's suddenly no longer an active post-it note. It's not actively on your list. And then again, what I love about this open cycle is if you ever feel like you get overwhelmed, you get stressed out, or you feel like you can't handle things, or you notice that you're getting anxious, this process of dumping your brain on paper, this process of getting it out of your head, all those things that are just trilling around in there, all of a sudden what will happen is you're actually going to start keeping your mind clean. So you notice you're not beating yourself up with a bunch of things that haven't gotten done. And it's, it, if you focus on this practice where you keep everything in one place, in one notebook or on a digital medium, like one specific digital medium, if you keep something running like that, what will happen is you'll notice you don't get that anxiousness. You don't get that overwhelm because it's in the process of being handled. And as soon as it starts to creep up, you just empty your brain and you clear it out. So that way you don't have a lot of upset or distraction. Right. I love how you uh, highlighted that. I have had this happen to millions of times, more, more than I can count mm -hmm. where I'm doing something. And all of a sudden I get this like panic, like, Oh no, I still have to whatever, insert whatever sentence you want. And one, I have that surge of adrenaline <laughs> takes yes. me off task. And then if I just go, okay, I'll handle it later, later. And I don't document it. I keep coming to, I keep having those like uh, moments where I'm totally taken off track, mm -hmm. remembering, oh shoot, I haven't done this, or I have this project that needs to be handled. But if it's written down, you're not having those moments of panic. And they could be like, you know, I have used to have them when I was driving. Oh my gosh, I forgot to do whatever. Now I don't have those. I'm not waking up in the middle of the night going, oh my goodness, I have this to do this month because I know it's written down, it's scheduled or it's like I've decommitted from it. You make a really good point about a practice before you go to bed, any open cycles that you have right down before you go to sleep, because mm -hmm. then your brain's not going to work on them. It'll allow you to actually have that peace of mind. Right. Getting it out of your brain better out than in. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. It's so important, right? What you keep in your brain. So there's this uh, process in organizing that I like to call micro macro. And micro is if you're an employee in a job and you're doing that job, if something goes wrong in that job, it's like world shattering because, oh my gosh, I'm supposed to do this job and here's one piece. But if you're the CEO looking at that thing that goes wrong in your job, you're like, eh, well, that's one of many things that could go wrong. So you have a lot more distance from it. That's what it's like in your brain. If you don't write things down, you're like the employee letting your mind run you ragged all over the place. 
However, if you can get it out of your head, you get distance. Now, not only that, you can access the right brain of, now you can access your right mind. They has the creativity of like, oh, I could get these things done in this way, or I could create a pocket of something here where you don't have that creative usefulness when it's all up in your head because everything is almost like equal value and you never get to win because when you start succeeding at something, it's like, but you haven't done this. And then you do that and you go, well, but you haven't done this. So it doesn't allow you to have that, that win, that success. Right. It's those distractions take away from things that are going well. And that that's all these open cycles end up being. If you keep them just in your head, hoping you'll remember them you'll remember them at the most inopportune times. They will take you off track and they will distract you. Exactly. Exactly. So this month, again, it's really, we're talking about building momentum with planning and it doesn't have to be like your kind of planning where you'll get much deeper in detail. It could be just a loose plan of past, present, and future where, you know, what are you cleaning up? What are you focusing on this month that must get done? And where what are you building towards of what must get done coming up? And then that way you have a trajectory. So you're harnessing all that horsepower that you have. You're going in one direction. You're, you're using your energy wisely. So that's really important to understand that. The other, oh, sorry. The other part is really being able to look at, well, what happened last month? What adjustments do I need to make? How do I need to adapt? And so again, it's finding what your process is. So Anita, do you have like, I just want you to revisit because there's some people that may just be tuning in. So what is your process? If you could just walk us through your process each month really quickly on the review, how you do your goals, and then like your open cycles, just so people can understand what that flow feels like. Sure. I have my list usually uh, within arm's reach of my desk so I can see it all the time. The last week in the month, I usually move it from hanging on the wall to right in front of me uh, on my desk so I can kind of see it and, and kind of marinate on it near the end. Then the end of the month, I look at all the things I accomplished. I celebrate them. I then take the time to look at my calendar to see what I've got on the books for the next month and document those, look at what things I want to carry over from the previous month. And then if things aren't full by then, <laughs> I look at messes I need to clean up. I look at things I have to absolutely get done in the coming month, which should have already been in my calendar because I'm super organized. And then I look at what I can do to propel my business forward and schedule stuff like that in. Thank you for breaking it down really simply, because again, the whole point of the show is to give you the tools each month to structure a plan going forward. And one of the things that I really want to talk about, Anita, that we can, because we only have like five, four minutes left in the show, five minutes. So what I really want to structure is it's a work in progress, right? You take your best shot. How do you do? It's always like adapting correcting and continuing because we've evolved how many different iterations of our goals over the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's constantly making adjustments to with what's going on. I mean, you and I had plans a couple of years ago to possibly go to New York and see a speaker and then everything went three bubbles left to center and we had to adjust. No big deal. Mm -hmm. Things happen. And to really be forgiving when things don't go according to your original plan. All it takes is like, you know, if it's digital, just do some deleting. If it's a written document, cross it out, write something on there and always understand you can adjust it at any moment in time. And, and it's perfectly okay. There are no right or wrongs. It's what is what works for you is the right thing to do. Exactly. And again, it also depends on your personality type because everybody processes and retrieves information differently. And it really comes down to what is your style? Do you like that flexibility and freedom where you can like move things around and have more of a menu? Or do you really need to have the big picture so you know how to move forward? Or are you really organized and you need that structure in that plan? Or do you really just want to like kind of feel into it and see where you're at? And, you know, are you, are you focused where you really base everything on relationships and that kind of determines what's important for you this month? It really, it really doesn't matter how you approach it. It just matters that you have an approach. Mm -hmm. 
right? I think that's really, right. I'm going to say that again. It doesn't matter what your approach is, just that you have an approach and then you review that approach because it's going to keep evolving. Yes. And I think you really touch on something so important. I want to state it again. When you kind of went into the different how people process things differently like the blueprint nurturing that sort of stuff it made a difference on how i approached people i work with and how i even approach my own stuff understanding that i'm quite structured in a lot of areas just understanding that about myself made this process easier mm -hmm. absolutely and then you're not forcing your viewpoint on somebody else. Like I do it this way, therefore you do it. Like that's my biggest pet peeve with personal organizers, right? They have one, a one step approach and they expect everyone to be able to do it. And it's like, no, I mean, that's like going to school. That's a one way of teaching. No, everyone's different and you have to adapt it to what makes sense for you. Right. And understanding mm -hmm. that, that I quit beating myself up for not doing it the same way as guru, you know, Joe Blow. Right. Exactly. Yes. Hey, Anita, we, I have about 30, myself. we have about 30 seconds. So I just want any final uh, words of advice for people listening. Oh, gosh. The biggest thing I want to say is just have fun with this. There are no rules. Just start making some progress. And if it works for you, it's amazing. Celebrate and always, always, always make it fun for yourself. Absolutely. And again, come back here, tune in every Wednesday, 5 to 6 p.m. with Clarity Corner with Christiana, uh, where we're going to continue to uncover what's clouding your vision and holding you back from communicating and thinking clearly. The whole goal is to get rid of the clutter that's blocking your success. And remember, it's not what you know, it's what you implement that makes all the difference. So go and make your plan tune in, ask any questions on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash the clarity strategist. And we will see you next week. Have an amazing week.